Glass Animals' Dreamland is the next album in the Lyrics Explain series. That's where I break down the songs of your favorite musicians so that you can enjoy your music even more, finding out what's going on in these songs to give you the context to help you understand. So who are Glass Animals? Not everybody knows who they are. They're an indie rock band. And they've had three albums. The last one was in 2016. So this is a much anticipated album by their fans. And it went right to the top of the Billboard 200 album chart. And let's find out what is going on. So let's start. Let's Stark. Let's Tony Stark do the Tony Stark. Let's start with number one, Dreamland, the title track. The entire album is a look back at a more innocent time in our lives. They're trying to reconstruct parts of your childhood. It's a collection of memories of days gone by and the perspective of an, of an adult looking back on their youth and younger days from childhood through teenage years, young adulthood. And, and for uh, some of us, I'm 107 years old. So for some of us, that's a group of years that is very distant. I, I was born in 1875, and so therefore there is a long period of time that I have to try to recollect, recollect, which is not always easy, okay? But Dreamland sets the stage of all of this, and they do that by focusing the lyrics on the dreamsicle. Now, you may not know what a dreamsicle is. It's kind of like a fudgesicle or a popsicle, more like a fudgesicle, in that the innards, the innards, it's on a stick, much like a popsicle. The inside is vanilla flavored ice cream and the outside is sort of an orange sherbet flavor. And it tended to vary depending on the market that you lived in, this in the area that you lived in. So in some areas you might know the term creamsicle and I have no desire to know what that is all about. But where I grew up in Canada, we called them dreamsicles. And so the title track Dreamland uses that as a device to unlock those memories and some of the things that we all at different stages of our lives went through, the, the uh, sodas that we drank, the candy that we liked, the music that we listened to, the TV shows that we watched, the bicycles we rode, the skateboards that we purchased, the sports we got involved in, etc., the music heroes, the sports stars. And we're going to find out a lot of a lot of those um, themes and and uh, categories that are hanging like curtains through this album. So that's the title track, Dreamland. Now number two is Tangerine. This is just a really interesting way to talk about dreams. So sure, you have thoughts and memories and in, in your head. Okay, the misty water colored memories of our minds, as Her Royal Highness Barbara Streisand once said in a famous song, The Way We Were. But Tangerine is a, it talks about dreaming. And so Tangerine Dreams. What do you think of when you think of the phrase Tangerine Dreams? Well, they're probably sweet. They're a little tart. They're easy to peel. If you've ever peeled a tangerine, the peel comes right off. Unlike, unlike a navel orange. Now, I heard one time you roll the orange to get the peel to loosen itself from the orange itself, the orange innards, let's say. That never works. So in the case of tangerine, those are the easy dreams. Those are the ones that we can access over time. And in fact, maybe we're even in our mind putting actual real events into the dream category. It's a very fascinating song. Number three is Home Movie 1994. How long is this track? Seven seconds. And this really shows how a, a, a top artist like Glass Animals, they don't need a lot of time to make their point. They're artists. They can convey information very, very quickly. So this song, the chorus, the verses, the breakdown, and the final tale, they all take place in seven seconds. So you have to be pay attention to, to listen to what they're trying to say. And what they're trying to say in Home, Home Movie 1994 is, and of course, we'll see in the video, the music video, 
they'll probably more than likely have footage of their own growing up years. And so it talks about family. It talks about being together as kids. It talks about now you might have your own family. And it talks about this through line of our family generation after generation, a great track. Number four on Dreamland is Hot Sugar. So we might think of, let's put it this way. When I was a kid, we had uh, cereal in the morning, but we could, we could you, you say, well, I want some scrambled eggs. My dad would be like, well, okay. So when did you become Von Baron Day eggs? When did we become rich? Because that's what rich people have for breakfast. You have Cheerios, cold. So we started to associate warm breakfasts with people that were doing better than us, people that were just poor Catholic kids, right? With one Hot Wheels car that was our friend for seven years and you carry it in your pocket and you talk to it. So sometimes he'd get frustrated at us and he'd say, okay, you want a hot breakfast? How about this? And he'd heat up some sugar and then pour it on our cold cereal. He'd say, there you go, hot breakfast. Thanks, Daddy. Right? I mean, what are you going to say, right? <laughs> He's uh, not happy. So that's the what they're talking about, hot sugar in that track. Now, number five, again, home movie, BTX, 13 seconds. Here you have stellar storytelling from international superstars known as Glass Animals. They only need 13 seconds to get this song from front to back, from top to bottom, sealed, packaged, and delivered to your brain. And it's a really fascinating song. Also referring to those home movies of our youth and how movies could be both reality or a dream. Who is to say? Now, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Space Ghost was a very popular animated children's cartoon of the time. And he'd say, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. So that was the tag that led up to where they promote the show in between the shows leading up to Space Ghost. But Space Ghost was literally that. He was a ghost that would travel from planet to planet. And as he flew around, he would then scare people at these different planetary locations, different star systems. And he'd come out of the, from behind a bush or a garbage can and he's like, Space Ghost. And these kids would be like, ah! But he was held, and he'd, he'd often get arrested at these different cultures, these different societies throughout the galaxy. And they always let him go. Why? Because he was so laid back. He was such a nice, nice guy. They'd say, you are being charged with scaring the kids on this planet. What do you say? He'd say, well, I'm Space Ghost, coast to coast. And they ultimately let him go. It was unbelievable. But that was a very popular cartoon. Tokyo Drifting, wow, here's another great song. How many of us had a Honda Accord or perhaps a Toyota Celica that we souped up and were able to slide the rear end at will as we drove down the street? You might even had a nitroglycerin pack in front so that you could just hit that button and go from 60 to over 275 plus miles an hour with just a shot of nitro. And now you're really super swerving all over the freeway. Ooh, ooh. This is well before Fast and Furious, that very successful movie franchise. And so we were making it up just like the early skateboarders. We were making it up as we went along. And Tokyo Drifting talks about those early days of the what we called the super sliders at that time. And uh, some of them maybe were trying to get away from the law and super sliding through some of the alleys of the hometowns there. But that's what that song is all about. Uh, did you make sure that that arrest record is under? OK, it's under it's under seal. OK, now you've got number eight on the track list Melon and the Coconut. So there was a very famous song that had the phrase, the lyric, put the lime in the coconut. This song talks as almost like fan fiction about that song. So in other words, much like the fan fictions that you might see from fans of Harry Potter, where they use the existing characters of 
a novel of a Harry Potter work and create their own stories using those characters so it's not really legal. In this case, it is because they've changed all of, they basically used Lime in the Coconut Song as the structure for Melon in the Coconut. Get it? Melon and the Coconut. Put the melon in the coconut and get your head all crazy. See, that's the lyrics of it. Get Put the melon in the coconut and get your head all crazy. We're looking back at memories that might be kind of hazy. So it's not quite as sing-songy and cornball as I just did. But that is really the angle of the song and why it's so successful on this album. Number nine. Number nine on the list is Your Love, Deja Vu. Wow, what a powerful song because now what they, think about what they're saying right in the title your love deja vu <laughs> how many of us have dated different people over the years and they are stunningly eerily similar to each other they might even look like each other and that's not totally unexpected because most of us have a type that somehow appeals to us we don't know why but in this song, they talk about that continual circle of love, that your love has a sense of deja vu about it because sometimes you're talking to a new relationship and you look at a cross at her and you go, um, have we met? <laughs> have we met in a former life, perhaps 20, 30 years ago? I mean, this is scary, scary. <laughs> So that's what that song is all about, that phenomenon. Now, number 10, waterfalls coming out of your mouth. Doesn't that sound sort of lyrical? Well, it's really talking about the lies that people in our circle, it could be family, it could be friends, it might even be your dog telling you lies. You come home, right? And you look and there are pieces of the flooring that you just put in all over the house. And you go into the kitchen and who is in the corner of the kitchen over by the sink with a piece of the flooring that you just installed for $17,000, a piece of it is in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Rover. And so the waterfalls that are gonna come out of their mouth are gonna be have to be stellar because Otherwise, you're going to blame them. So you say, uh, hey, what, Rover, what happened here? Did somebody eat the brand new floor? And that dog better have a pretty good story. All right, number, <laughs> number 11 is it's all so incredibly loud. And this is really a distinct memory for me. Because at the age of 11, 12, 13, in the early 1970s, I was cranking the Led Zeppelin whole lot of love okay stairway to heaven black sabbath war pigs all right uh blue oyster cult uh ario speed wagon fog hat fog hat fog hat all of these bands emerson lake and palmer that were so popular in the 70s kiss <laughs> i want to rock and roll you, you know so this song is a really, in my mind, a look back at parental frustration with teens. The memory is sharp in my mind. My dad had opened the door. He'd say, it's all so incredibly loud. And I, but I had the headphones on and it was so loud they could hear it within two and a half blocks. So that's why I have a very t hard time hearing today. What's that? I said, I said, I have a very hard time hearing today. So that's the reason that uh, it's a kind of a personal association with me and why I love this song so much. Now, number 12, again, Home Movie Rockets. How many home movies have we had on this album so far? Well, this would be the third, and that's not the end of it. There's more to come. So Home Movie Rockets, wow, this one is long. This is a minute long. Now you say, well, this goes against what you just said about them being stellar storytellers of international renown, that they could get the chorus and the verse and the breakdown all done within seven seconds. Well, well how come they didn't do it here? You don't understand. It's not so much that they can't do it. They didn't need to do it. The song comes in at a minute even. 
You think that wasn't purposeful? You don't think the glass animals know how much time they need to tell a story? Well, I'd like you to call up 1-800-GLASS animals, 1-800-GLASS-ANIMALS, the 800 number, and complain. Are you complaining that the song is only a minute long? Are you feeling like you didn't get enough for your record buying dollar, your music purchasing power? Call up the 800 number if you've got to complain about the length of this song. And you say, well, Joe, Joe said that they only needed seven seconds to tell the home movie story earlier in the album. And here they went a minute. <laughs> What's up? Well, don't, don't look at me. I, don't, I accept that they tell stories the way they want. If you've got a complaint, call 1-800-GLASS-ANIMALS and let them know. Number 13 on the track list for Dreamland by the Glass Animals is the wonderful song, Domestic Bliss. Wow, Domestic Bliss is such an achievable goal, but why is it so hard to achieve? It's achievable, and yet so many of us fail on our way to Domestic Bliss. It might be because maybe at first you're not used to somebody being there three, four, five years, and you look across the table uh, after the fifth, sixth, seventh year, and you go, wow, they're still here. Why are they still here? And maybe it's just your brain isn't used to it, having relationships of that length. Or it just might be the difficulties of trying to survive in today's world, <sighs> raising children, raising livestock, raising corn, raising soybeans, and still trying to maintain enough romantic dates. You have to schedule the dates now. They call it date night. And I know that in the, the year 2020, I've had th two date nights, maybe one and a half. They're very difficult to schedule. And she does explain that she has these responsibilities. Now, I have had some question about some of the calls she's getting on her cell phone and where she goes uh, six or seven nights a week without really explaining. She said she has to get the battery checked all the time. It doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but I accept that as my partner, she's going to be up front with me at all times. And so really domestic bliss talks a lot about trust. And that's what this song is all about. Number 14, heat waves. You know, those, in, you know, when you're watching a movie or maybe even just in real life, you experience this shimmering wave of heat that distorts your vision when it comes off the very hot asphalt in the middle of summer. And maybe you're walking back from the swimming pool as a kid and you were lucky enough to get an ice cream because the ice cream truck came by and you had just enough money left over from swimming. And so you're eating your ice cream and the ice cream is pouring down your hands and you get all over your mouth. You've got your towel over your shoulder. Maybe you're wearing your goggles around your neck. Perhaps you had flip fins. <laughs> All right, and those are dangled around your neck. So you can feel the hot rubber of the goggles and the flip fins around your neck, the ice cream. So it's the contrast between heat and the cold of the ice cream. Maybe you got a dreamsicle. Maybe you got a creamsicle, a popsicle, a popsicle, who knows? And so Heat Waves talks about that contrast in our memories. Now, number 15, home movies. I told you there'd be another one. And this is Shoes On. And this one is 31 seconds. So if you have any complaints about the length, again, don't call me. Email them at complaints at glassanimalscomplaintdepartment.com and they'll take care of it. But this is only 31 seconds. Home movies, shoes on. It's so funny to look back at home movies. And first of all, you look so young. You just, <laughs> you will be as you were. But everybody has a baby face. You're wearing some god-awful clothes that you don't know why your mom thought was appropriate for any human being to wear at any time in history. But it's what was either available or that they could afford or that, that you would put on without pitching a hissy. But my mom, who had six kids, said that in the winter, she would go one by one from the oldest to the youngest, uh, put them on their coat, put on their boots, maybe a cap, throw the hood up, push them out the door with their mittens on. And then there's number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. By the time she was done with little baby who could barely move in the winter gear, guess who wants to come back in? The oldest. 
So now we got to take off the clothes of number one, then number two, number three, number four, number five, and then here comes little baby. Not only can barely move with those clothes, they're now frozen like a block of ice. You know, they're like two. And she had to start all over. So really this song, Shoes On, says, look, when you're coming in from now on, from outside in the cold, just leave all these clothes on. Leave your shoes on. Leave your park on. I don't care if you overheat. Just leave them on. So that tomorrow, when you want to go back out, you're ready to go. That's how my mom handled it anyway. And finally, number 16, the final track in this landmark album is called Helium. Now, what happens when you, what happens when you take a helium balloon and breathe in a little of that helium, then you start talking like Donald Duck. You know, your voice is really high. Well, that's what this song is trying to say, is that through all of this, as I've said many times, an album tells a story. And this album is telling the story of memories, of dreams, of childhood. A look back at a much younger and perhaps more innocent person it's almost as if we've taken in some helium and it's not just that we're speaking like Donald Duck, but that we're using an outside agent. In this case, music, all right? It's a metaphor for music, using that agent to tap into our memories, tap into our dreams, tap into all of those blocks, those building blocks of memory and mindfulness and dreams and hopes and fears that make up who we are today, and, an, and really an exploration through our entire brain, from front to back, not just the part between, they always say the part between your ears is the most important. Well, what about the front of your brain? What about the back? And so this album looks at all parts of the brain, almost like a musical brain scan is what you have in this excellent album by Glass Animals. Guys, I hope that helps. We went track by track and looked at the context and the meaning of each of these songs by exploring the lyrics and helping you understand your music so you can enjoy it even more. Come back guys, we have so much more and I will see you then. What's that? Well, okay, but I don't remember, I don't remember anything. This album is about dreams and memories. I barely remember three, three days ago. Like, where are my keys? I need to go start my car because the battery's been dying. I got to keep it charged. I can't find my keys, dude. Are you pranking me? Seriously? Oh, man. I still would have forgot them. <laughs>